Good afternoon, Darcy. How are you? I am so good, Jason. I'm so happy to be here today. I know. I'm so delighted to have you here. And I want to own something with you, Darcy, right off the top. Usually I let the guests introduce themselves and I'm going to have you do that in a minute, but I actually want to introduce you a little bit and own a little bit of imposter syndrome that I have. (laughs) So (laughs) Darcy is my vocal coach. So I hired Darcy to work on my my vocal power um, and also through the podcast or the coaching work I do, the speaking work I do. And we actually met through a speaking program. So Darcy, I just want to say right off the top that I'm nervous that you're going to be judging my vocal power the whole time and also (laughs) knowing that you are going to, um, when you hear Darcy speak, you'll be like, she's good. So I feel like I'm, I'm competing against like, <laughs> we're not actually competing, but I just want to own this with you right up, right up the top. <laughs> you are funny. Well, thank you very much. That's quite an intro. Thank you very much. Yeah, Darcy, I'm imagining you over there going, don't worry about it, Jason. It's going to be great. And you got like, you're like scribbling notes. You're like, uh-huh. No, uh-huh. I'm not scribbling. I'm Breathe. not scribbling anything. <laughs> no, so anyway, I just want to say that right off the top. So Darcy, welcome. So glad to have you here. And now it, I'd love to have you introduce introduce yourself to the audience. So who you are, where you are in the world, and anything else you want to uh, share to kick us off today. Thank you. Um, I'm Darcy Webb. I um, also, tongue in cheek, call myself the speech diva. That's how many of my former students know me. And I'm I'm here talking to you from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where I've lived for 20 years, but I'm about to move to Southern Delaware, very close to the beach. Mm-hmm. Um, w- <laughs> and um, I'm really looking forward to that for a number of reasons. And we'll probably get into that real soon. Yes. Awesome, Darcy. Well, welcome once again. Thank Let's you. get right into it. So Darcy, yeah. what is something that you nerd out about? You probably know what I nerd out about. I think I do I, have a feeling what this question is going to be answered. <laughs> yeah, I really do. I am such a voice and speech nerd. Um, but but in particular, what I really can go crazy over is something called the IPA or the International Phonetic Alphabet. And I could talk mm. about the International Phonetic Alphabet for hours. Do you know what that is, Jason? I don't. I, I'm fascinated. The International phonetic alphabet is a series of symbols that represent sounds, vowel sounds, consonant hmm. sounds. And in, in the standard American dialect, you know, it's kind of like a non-regional dialect. It's the one that I use. <clears throat> you pretty much have it. <clears throat> Thank you. That's a compliment coming from Minnesota because yeah. a lot of people in Minnesota do, do not have a neutral dialect. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I know where I know where that one lands. But yes. no, you sound great. Thanks. Um, so, so each of these symbols has a sound that uh, is attached to it, and you can put them together to make words. And they, 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 they actually indicate tongue placement. Um, so, so you you can properly articulate a T, or if you have to have a particular dialect, maybe for a film, for instance, or mm. you know, for a TV show, you can move that tongue to place it in another place to make that T. So, you, so you can get really detailed about what's coming out of your mouth. Wow, um, that's cool. It is so cool. You remember when I, I I taught something called the vowel ladder and it had a series of sounds attached to it. And we were yes. all, you know, moving our bodies and making these strange sounds. All they were were vowel sounds and they have a particular symbol attached to them. And when you see the symbol and when you feel it in your body, your mouth knows what to do. Eventually you're, you're the, the muscles in your articulators in your mouth associate what's going on in your brain and in your body and on the paper. And you complete this vowel sound in a very holistic and healthy way. It's not that your speech is correct. It's that it's healthy. So that's what I like about it. Yeah. I I could geek out over that for hours. And when I I find somebody that knows what the IPA is, I'm I'm dead. I'm gone. (laughs) You're like, you're like, not an India pale ale, which you could <laughs> probably right. geek out on that a little bit too, but you could probably geek out over IPA over an IPA would be my guess. 
Yes, and there are memes that oh, I can imagine of, of people geeking out over the IPA, drinking an IPA. One of the great things about the show, I mean, there's many great things about doing this podcast, but one of the things that just struck me that I cannot wait to ask you right now, because I think it's related to this. I've always had this question and I've never asked anybody of it, but I think you know the answer. Why can British actors and actresses so easily play Americans, but Americans cannot play Brits? What's going on with that in terms of the, the dialect? I have no idea. Really? I, I really don't. I'm probably somebody out there listening does, but no. Yeah. And it is absolutely true. It is absolutely true. And I've had Brits in my class, in my college classes, when we were doing an exchange program with a university in London. Yeah. They could always nail it. Right. And Americans couldn't. That's right. <laughs> well, oh, it just I can. <laughs> yeah. It, it blows my mind when I'll give you two examples, <clears throat> Christian Bale and Damian Lewis from Homeland and Billions. Mm -hmm. And you hear them, like you hear yeah. them in American roles. They both have played multiple American roles. And then you hear them on these like British shows or you see them on the tonight show and they come with these posh predicts accents. I'm like, yeah. what? That's yeah. crazy. I had no idea, but I can't name for you one American actor that's ever done a British accent. Well, I mean, obviously the most famous horrific version is Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins, which is just, <laughs> like, it's, so, it's so notoriously <laughs> terrible. Like, and my, my daughter's five as, as you know, so we, she watched Mary Poppins. I'm like, it's, it's just entertainingly bad. It's just that terrible. <laughs> yes, so I actually read, I don't, did, did you see the, did you see the newer Mary Poppins that came out with Emily I Blunt? Did. Yes. Yeah. I did. So I, I read I that. It. Yeah, it was good. I read that Lin Manuel, who plays who plays um, you know the Lin Manuel Miranda, who is obviously not British. I read that he worked for the vocal coach for a long time to get his accent because he didn't want to be he didn't want to have the same. <laughs> he didn't want to be Dick Van Dyke. And he didn't want to be the same his legacy. Accent wasn't great. <laughs> it wasn't great. He's also d either Dominican or Puerto Rican. That's a that's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> Well, it's really not if you know your IPA and you practice. And that's really what it requires is practice, 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 practice. Yeah. You know, I went with, I, I went to college with a, a guy who was from a working class neighborhood in Pittsburgh and he had a total Pittsburgh accent and hated it. Yeah. I'll bet he transformed his accent in about a month. He loved voice and speech and teaches voice and speech at the Strasburg Institute today because he's he's another one that geeks out over it. Yeah. Is that the Strasburg, like the Strasburg method? Is that what it's called? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I've heard of he, that. Yep. He teaches speech there. Nice. All right. Yeah. So kind of in the same vein of this question is um, talking about your comfort zone. So Darcy, what is something that is inside of your comfort zone? that might be outside of somebody else's besides that besides that yeah talking about the ipa yeah. besides the ipa something different well and and besides voice and speech because i know that that kind of makes people a little nervous when they hear, know that i'm listening to them and half the time i'm not really <laughs> listening for that stuff like so, on a podcast or something like, like yeah, that sort well, of thing. yeah i get I it i just often <laughs> choose not to use, listen to podcasts <laughs> if i don't like the voice <laughs> I don't also listen to very many books on tape for that reason. I, mm. I it's just it's hard. For I, me I do want to away. share something with you about a book that is really phenomenal to listen to that I'm currently <laughs> in audible is Matthew McConaughey's green lights. He's a great person to listen to. I'm I writing think. that down. Yeah. I mean, it's a bestseller right now. It's, it's really, it's, it's a good book. Cause he's, he's such an interesting guy and he's got so many stories. I'm not sure how much of it is completely true, but his voice is so nice to listen to. Cause it's, you know, he's got that Texas thing going on Yeah, and you know him so well from all the movies that you're, you're like listening to him read his own book. It's, it is, I really like his voice. It's very calming. Yeah, I like his voice too. Yeah. Do he's obviously done a lot of work. Yes. Or it was gifted to him. Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. that, and that happens that really I've seen that time and time again, people will walk into my studio and I think, Oh my God, where did you get that? 
<laughs> you probably so, have other people walk into your studio and go, oh my God, oh, where did you get that? I do. I mean, can I just tell you a quick story? There was of one, course. One human many, many years ago in my uh, voice and speech class, and let's say his name, and this was not his name, but let's say his name was Bryce, but it mm -hmm. wasn't, it truly wasn't. Mm -hmm. And when he introduced himself to me, he said his name was Bryce. And I thought, mm, we're going to have, we're going to have <laughs> some stuff to work on. This is going to be pretty tricky. And uh, what he told me was that his mother spoke the same way. I said, you know, you have a little problem with your R's. And so we were working actually to feel where the tongue goes when you make that R. If you make that R, do that right now. Er. Er. You feel what your tongue does? Yeah. Like the pushes to the top of your roof, the roof of yeah, your mouth. Well, just the sides of the tongue. Er. Mm -hmm. Just go up to, to like your molars. And we worked for the longest time. And what he told me was that his mother talked that way. And I mm. said, well, you know, this will be tricky because you've been listening to that since you were in her womb. And that makes yeah. a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. That that actually makes a ton of sense. So I, I mentioned, and for the listeners know that I'm from Minnesota originally, my parents and my grand, so my, my grandparents were all from Kansas and they all had pretty strong Kansas accents. Mm -hmm. My parents are both are obviously from Kansas too. And I think what happened over time and I got, for me, I feel fortunate in this is that my parents lived in Minnesota long enough where they probably lost a bit of their regional dialect. And so yeah. for me growing up in Minnesota, I wasn't, my parents didn't have the Minnesota accent. I'm not saying anything wrong with it, but also like, I didn't grow up in a house that had that, but I, my parents also don't have a strong Kansas accent, which was a good mix of, I kind of ended up with a kind of, I don't know, like I heard somewhere it's like the South, like it's South Dakota, like where Tom Brokaw is from is like the perfect news accent. Cause there actually isn't much of one or something. I, I yeah, think I read it's that really, before. It's not, it's a non-regional accent and people That's say, right. Oh, it comes from here and it comes from there and it comes from here. It just kind of comes from everywhere. Yeah. And you will hear more and more newscasters using it. You know, <laughs> when I was first taught to speak with distinction, I'm going to demonstrate how we were supposed to speak. Yes. We were supposed to speak like this. this was <laughs> like you're at a great gap, like you're at a Jay Gatsby party or something. Yes. Like you are at a Jay Gatsby party. And let me tell you, I have intimidated a few people with this sound. I mean, it's awful. It's just, yeah. and nobody uses that anymore. No, but but that's it horrible. was <laughs> so horrible. And, I, and so I was supposed to do this um, narration for these two women um, who were turning their estate into a botanical garden. And they, they, I needed to do the narration for their video. You know, they were making a promo mm, video, mm -hmm. made a big estate. And these women were very, very rich and they had gone to finishing school. Mm. So this one woman says to me, Oh, you teach. Where do you teach? So I tell her where I teach. And she says to me, Oh, what do you teach there? And I said, I teach voice and speech. And she said, oh, really? Oh, I have always wanted to be able to speak well. I started to laugh. I, I am telling you, this is a true story, Jason. That's I am awesome. not making this up. And she said to me, and I said, but Susan, you already speak the way I'm trying to teach my students. <laughs> she didn't even hear that. Yeah. I just always wanted to speak well. So that is funny. Like she's so used to it that she doesn't know anything different. Nope. That's funny. What um so what's something that is outside of your comfort zone that's oh. going to be inside of somebody else's? Oh god. Just uh, you it's got to be technology. I mean, what <laughs> <laughs> I I work at a university. I teach voice and speech at a university and we have to prepare our classes, plan our classes, grade our classes, do, do everything for our classes on this platform 
that is so complicated and convoluted to me that I, 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 I have to make my husband sit beside me and talk every week and talk me through it because I cannot do it myself. And I feel like a geezer. I just, you know, <laughs> and they say to me, so the students get online with me because, you know, I'm teaching on Zoom right now. Yeah, of course. Well, I didn't see that assignment that you. Yeah. I, I sent you an email. Well, we didn't read the email. We were looking for it in the announcements. I thought, I can't. I, <laughs> I posted it five places, but I didn't post it in the announcement. So I'm completely flummoxed. I'm very intimidated by it. I have to have him sit beside me. It's making me exceedingly anxious. Yeah. Have you talked to your therapist about this, Darcy? I do need to speak to my therapist. And here's the other thing that really, that I'm very uncomfortable with. And y'all are just all over it, is linked in. Uh -huh. about LinkedIn. I don't like LinkedIn. I get on it. I look at these announcements I have. 57 people have searched for you this week. And I think, yeah. well, I should say thank you. <laughs> I love I that's amazing. I just don't know. What I'm to... <laughs> I, just don't, uh, I don't know where to put myself on LinkedIn. So yeah, I steer clear. LinkedIn is... Oh, that's a whole different topic. LinkedIn, I have a real love hate with LinkedIn because it's a okay. really great place to connect. I I promote the podcast on LinkedIn. It's a great way to share what you're up to. And also, I just it's so sleazy how you get sold to on LinkedIn. I don't know if this happens to you. No, because I don't go on. <laughs> <laughs> they try to sell to you, they're like, screw this person. They're never gonna respond to me because you're literally not on it. Yeah, like <laughs> There's a lot of people selling and a lot of the things that there's all these companies who provide technology that allow you to like mass LinkedIn people like you would mass email somebody. And they're so inauthentic. It's like, hey, Jason, how's your coaching business going? I'm like, you're a robot. I'm not going to respond to you. And then if you don't respond, then you get a thing the next day. Then you get a thing the next day. And then if you find, and then once you respond, then you get like a bunch of more automated things. And I, I've talked about this with a couple other people on the show. It, just drives me to an end, but it is, it is a cool place to connect with great people. Um, I think the thing about you were searched 57 times and like, thank you for finding me. That's so funny to see you be like, so do I send them a personal thank you card? You searched for me, but I didn't hear from you. So I guess that means that you don't want to talk to me. Like what's going on here? <laughs> I'm telling you, I really don't know what to do with it. So that's great. I steer clear. <laughs> I love that. That's great. Technology and LinkedIn. Those are, those yep. are both two new answers to this question that I have not gotten yet. That's fantastic. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about speaking, public speaking using yeah. IPA, which I learned about 20 <laughs> minutes ago. Yeah. You obviously do a ton of speaking. You have a theater background, you have speech background, like obviously you've spent a lot of time speaking in front of people. Yeah. I, I give you five minutes. I have the I snap my fingers and give you five minutes and you get to deliver five minutes of something to the world and all of us get to hear your message. What is it that you would give your speech on and what would you want us as the audience to do at the end of it? Otherwise known as a call to action. This is very important to me right now. Mm -hmm. Age is just a number. You know, I attended a Zoom event the other night and the host asked someone to give her feedback after. And the feedback was, you need more age diversity. She told the host that I didn't count as being an elder because I don't look like I am 67. Well, look at I you. Look like I'm 37. Now, first of all, let's talk about Zoom distortion. She couldn't really <laughs> tell what I looked like. Second, I don't act like I'm 67. I am constantly seeking. I am curious about the world. I am curious about other people. I am engaging with people of all ages. I stay fit. I eat really well. Mm -hmm. I will not buy that notion that at 65 or 75 or 85, you have to kind of sit down and watch TV in your bark a lounger or maybe go out and, you know, hit a couple of golf balls. Health yeah. is paramount. I eat well, I take my vitamins, I exercise. And that is no guarantee that I won't get sick. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I'm upping my chances as best I can because I want to be 
like my grandfather who died at 93 while he was chopping wood. Mm. So yeah, my call, my call to action is st- stay fit, stay well, engage with the world. I love that, Darcy. My, um, my parents are your age as well. And you shared your age, so not a surprise. And they've also had a, a renaissance in that way as well. The parents are extremely active. They take good care of themselves. They're very curious. They're always learning things. They're going out and doing things. My dad's worst nightmare. I think I need to have my dad on the show sometime. I think it would be pretty fun to interview him. That would be great. That would be great. Um, so dad, if you're listening, consider that an invite. The, um, my dad, he just reti- he just retired last year. After a long career in, um, he was a city administrator for a long time. And then he went and he was in, he was a non-political public service. So he's always around local government. Uh, non, but non-political. And he retired last year after a really distinguished and phenomenal career. And I said, oh, see, my dad is also doesn't play sports. I'm like, so I'm assuming that you're going to go hit the golf course every day and then, you know, take a nap in the afternoon and, you know, watch the news at five. And he's like, that is my worst nightmare. Yeah. So actually him and my mom do a ton of stuff now. They're always, you know, obviously with COVID over the last year, it's been a little strange, but Tr- yeah. They 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 finally took a trip to um they went to Israel last year something they always wanted to do they right. my dad like they, they live in Minneapolis and they ride um they call them in Minneapolis I don't know if you have these in Pens- in Philadelphia they call them in New York they call them city bikes like the the public oh, bikes yeah. You can, yeah I don't know what they call them there but and I think yeah. in, I don't know but they ride they ride those bikes around town my they, he rides them downtown to go to the gym so I am with you and I thinking about for me I am quite a bit younger but you know every day I get a little bit closer to that. Like if I make it to that, I cannot imagine myself sitting down and like doing nothing, mm-hmm. not even doing nothing, but like just sitting and sitting around and be like, Oh, I worked for 40 years. Now I'm just going to hang out. Like I would need to, I would need to be doing stuff till the day I'm gone. I'm yeah. pretty positive and anything less yeah. than that. I'll just be bored. So I'm with you, Darcy. I'm so with you on that. Great. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. Yes. Because we have so much to contribute. We have so much yeah. to give. And I really, when I taught at another university um, that I left a year ago, I was really experiencing acutely ageism. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. You know, being shushed in meetings <sighs> and. Really? Oof. By, by the, by the chairperson who was older than I. Oof. And I, oh, that was just making me so hot under the car. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, Darcy. And and my experience of you, it, I don't know if there's any videos of you out there or not, but my experience, Ooh, yeah. my first, yeah. We'll, we'll put some links to these in the show notes. Darcy, I remember when you led us to that exercise and there was probably, this is when we first met at HPS, there was probably, I don't know, maybe like 20 to 25 professional speakers, people that want to work on this craft you have a lot of energy. And when you were having us do these exercises, Darcy, Darcy is not a teacher and a coach who's like, do as I say, not as I do. You're like, do this. And you're like down with us doing all these things. And when see these videos, I can't wait to put these out there. When Darcy asks you to do an exercise and now we're work, working one-on-one together, you're in there with me. And these are exercises where you're contorting your body, making really, really strange sounds, bending down, moving around. Like you are a very active and, uh, fit individual I can attribute to that because I'm like I'm like Darcy I'm like tired doing this stuff like I'm 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 in pretty good shape I'm like I'm tired so yes you're living it you're definitely living it yes but one of the reasons why you get tired doing that is because you're learning something new we always get tired when we're learning something new it's exhausting it is I started taking a Pilates class last month online and I would I would and I'm you know I'm pretty fit I do this stuff a lot and I'm I I do yoga. I was just fried. I was flattened because your mind is working as hard as your body. Yeah. Yeah. That totally makes sense. Well, that's awesome, Darcy. We're going to take a really brief commercial break and we'll be right back after this. The Talking to Cool People podcast is brought to you by Jason Frizzell Coaching. Jason works with amazing people who are looking to find and develop their passion and purpose and create their journey to wherever it is they want to go. Check us out at jasonfrizzell.com, Facebook, or on Instagram. 
Jason loves hearing from anyone who thinks it would be cool to connect, to be coached, or to be a guest on our show. Email him at podcast at jasonfrizzell.com or DM him on Facebook and Instagram. And now, back to some more amazing conversation on talking to cool people. All right, Darcy, welcome back. Thank you. So what we're going to go into next, or I'm going to ask you to go into next, is a little bit about your journey to what led you into your voice work and has you here today in February in 2021. Like what, you know, like who are you and how did you get here? (laughs) Where were you born? What time of the day? Yep. In other words, share whatever you'd like with, with me and with the audience that will have us get to know you better. Okay. Well, here's the thing. When I was in third grade, um, and you know, I don't know, like, this is really true. When I was in third grade, Mrs. McDonald used to make us get up and read every day. Hmm. And for some reason, and I liked reading. I was, I was reading by the time I was four because I had a brother-in-law who just thought that was so cute if he could teach me to read. And he did. Mm, that's cool. Um, yeah, it was cool. Uh, but I enjoyed reading and I enjoyed reading aloud, but Mrs. McDonald was just hell bent on teaching everybody to read with what she called expression. And that, that just, that never left my mind. Um, so I, I guess I always did that. I think I excelled in, um, in voice and speech when I was, when I was studying theater, I, I was really good at it, but I didn't really mm-hmm. think about it for a long time. I was trying to be an actor I got married. I moved to to, uh, Wilmington, Delaware. There wasn't a big theater scene there. I had kids. So what I was doing to occupy my time and entertain myself was I was reading to them um, from Dr. Seuss Mm -hmm. and just having the best time, sort of like practice, you know? And um, then one day, my husband, who taught at the University of the Arts, said to me, hey, you know, they need a voice and speech teacher for a section. Would you be interested? And I said, yes. And then I started teaching voice and speech, and I found that I was, I loved it, and I was making a difference in people's lives, so I never stopped. Yeah, that's there awesome. There was a point where I I was 26 or 27, and I was I was in a show, and 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 I was and it was good. The show was good. It was, it was important. It was, it was, um, it was a premiere and a, and a several very important people came to see it. And I was kind of proud of my work. And this one man who was kind of influential and uh, knew me came up to me after the show. And he said to me, Darcy, you were wonderful. If only I could have heard you. Mm. Oof. Yeah, that was a tough one. Yeah, I can that imagine. Was really wow. hard to hear. Yeah. But that never left me either. So so I became really interested in how I could be heard. It wasn't that I couldn't be that I was unintelligible. It was that I could not be heard. Mm-hmm. And you know, everybody's instrument is different. Their their bodies are different. And I grew up hearing from the time I was little that I had a big mouth. You have such a big mouth. Would you shut your mouth? I go to the dentist and the dentist says, you know, your mouth is really very small. So I started looking at other people's mouths, their heads, their resonators, and everybody's resonators are shaped differently. I have a little mouth. So I have to do things differently in order to make a sound that will resonate and that will be heard Mm -hmm. but took me a long time to figure that out yeah yeah i can imagine that was that was an interesting thing but it it sounds like it was something that was probably needed for your next level it it certainly was needed for my next level and it but it also set me back a little bit it really um kind of knocked the confidence out of me, not kind of knocked the wind out of my sails. I never felt like I was good enough. And I think, Jason, I really, I enjoy speaking to a crowd. I enjoy teaching enormously, Mm -hmm. but acting, I don't think I really enjoyed it as Hmm. much as I thought I did. Yeah. It, 
it was not my passion the way it was my husband's passion or my friend's passions. It, I just thought that that was what I was supposed to do. And yeah. it took me a long time to figure out, no, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. This is where I can <clears throat> serve the world. Yeah, I was just about to say the thing that just hit me that's super cool about that is you still get to be in that world and serve that world and like actually be around because you love that world. I do. But you but you get to serve it. Yeah. Yes. And I like you probably love being in a theater, is my guess. I do. I love that smell of you don't get it very often anymore unless you're in an old theater, but that smell of hemp. You know, mm. the, the, the ray, those ro- big ropes that raise yeah. lower the lights and the sets, that smell of dust, the dark. Um, I, I just, I love it. I love it. I feel very much at home there, but I don't want to do the work. And the work is hard. The work means you have to be really vulnerable. The work means you have to be thinking about it 24 seven. I would go to bed at nights and I would see lines a, a kind of like on the backs of my eyeballs when I mm-hmm. close my eyes. I don't enjoy the process of memorizing. And yeah. I did it for years. Yeah. 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 That is yeah. not my favorite thing either. I don't, yeah, I don't like memorizing anything. Like I'm a, I, I'm much, you know how people say, Hey, do you prefer, and I'm, I'm going to relate this to tape to Toastmasters. I don't know if you've ever done anything around Toastmasters. No. So Toastmasters has this thing called table topics and it's more of a, not rapid fire. You get a question from the, called the table topics master. And then you get up and you do a one to two minute impromptu speech. The other part of Toastmasters is you come with a prepared speech. I much prefer impromptu speeches, which is why I really like doing improv because I really like creating in the moment. And it's like, for me, like, I think it lends myself more to the personality of like, you get to be curious in the moment versus the rehearsed things. Yeah. Um, so I, and I, I don't like memorizing stuff because it feels like a box to me, which I, I get it. And I understand why you would do it, but I don't, I don't really like doing it either. So that um, it makes a ton of sense. I want to ask you uh, if we can just have a little bit of Darcy goodness here. So maybe we'll call this your free, your free laser coaching. Uh, voice coaching for the audience. Can yeah. I, perfect. I really love doing that. What did yes. you, did you have something in particular in mind? Um, yeah, no, I do. So I think voice work is something, and I'm speaking for myself too, that I never really thought about. Never really thought about it. I think professional speakers probably think about it. Actors, yeah. actresses, likely. I think it's kind of part of it. But there's a lot of people in a lot of professions that can really use this work who pr- never think about it, like salespeople, um, yeah. leaders, yeah. people that are like, even like, I'm thinking like law enforcement, firefighters, like people that can really powerfully use their voice, but don't ever know how to, like you said, really fully use their body to do this. So yeah. you've got somebody out here in the audience listening, which I'm sure there's people that go, you know what? I'd like to work on my vocal power. I'd like to learn. I, I, I identify with Darcy of like, hey, people tell me they can't hear me. What's the thing that you would say, and I'm sure you've had this question before, if you had five minutes with somebody, what would you either teach them or ask them to do that they can immediately increase their, their ability to like, you know, out of lung capacity or projection, whatever that thing is for them. What's like the quick hit that you'd say, go and do this. That'll immediately open up something for them. Geez, I have four or five quick hits. And I will tell you, I had a, I have a former student who was studying to be an actor and he went off to be a nurse and he wrote me 10 years later and he said, I use this work every single day. Right. It's amazing. So a quick hit. Um, let's see, the quickest hit, I think, you know, I think breath is really key to everything. Breath, mm-hmm. breath makes you feel like you're, you've got it, like you're in control. And so if I could, if people could see me, I could probably show you a breath exercise. But what I can do is describe an articulation exercise, which makes your speech a little clearer. Mm -hmm. How about that? I love that. And I could probably use it. (laughs) Yeah, well, we'll get to that. 
that's down the road. Uh oh. But so what? What? Um, this is a very uh, useful exercise for relaxing the jaw. See, a lot of people don't open their mouths to speak. And there are yeah. two things that happen when you open your mouth to speak. One is you have more room to get the sound out, right? There's more room, there's more, you know, your lips aren't covering so much the, the, the sound that's coming up and out of the vocal passageway. There's more room for your tongue to do the job that it needs to do, which is kind of move around to make those different sounds. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is, and this is magic, is that when your mouth is open and people are watching you and listening to you, they can actually see inside your mouth a little bit. Mm -hmm. They see your kind of, they could, they can see your tongue. They can just see in there and it's a way for them to connect with you. It's That's weird. It's like psychological, like a, almost yeah. like an animal instinct thing, right? Right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's fascinating. So. It is fascinating. So here's how we, we can get our mouths open. So what you do is you take your tongue and you drape it over your lower lip. I'm doing this as like, I'm doing this right now. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's totally flabby. Basically. Totally flabby. Yep. That's right. So. And if you can do this in the mirror, now my tongue is not moving at all. It's just out there draped over my tongue. It's like a slug. Uh-huh. Right? Is this laying there? So do you feel, Jason, as you're doing that, do you feel the tendency to want to pull it back in a little bit? Yeah, because it's drying out. And also pull it back in just because it, yeah, it feels strange. It feels strange. Yeah. So if you if you allow that, if you just do that every day, like a couple times a day for a few minutes. What you're doing is you're releasing the tension that we gather in the tongue. Lots of times we have a lot of tongue tension because we're trying not to say stuff that we know we shouldn't say mm -hmm. or because we're just tense in general and the tension we tend to gather in our, in our tongue at the, you know, the root of our tongue, which is underneath, you know, underneath the part that we usually see. And if you take your thumb, Jason, and you put it right under your chin, Mm -hmm. You can feel that root of the tongue. Feel that? Yeah. You can actually feel it moving around. So you can just massage that a little bit. And in, mas in doing that, in massaging that, you're actually releasing some of the tension in the tongue. And mm -hmm. you keep blaping that tongue over like this. Uh huh. And eventually what happens is your jaw starts to release. Uh huh. So uh, you might want to do that for two minutes. Put your tongue back in and then try and talk. And it's actually a lot easier. It is. It actually is. I don't know if the audience can hear the difference, but I definitely feel a difference. You feel the difference, don't I you? I do. My jaw feels much. And I've been talking a lot today because I've been in two other calls and another podcast. But it feels, I feel less tension coming down yeah. from my jaw into my neck. Like, I don't yeah. you know where your jugular is. I, I can yeah. feel that. Yeah, good. Yeah, sure. and it's also helping me open my mouth more. Yes. Which yeah. is really important for, uh, for articulation and for allowing the sound to come out. Yeah. One of the reasons why people can't hear us more or is because our sound is covered. And uh, let's see if I can do a covered sound for you. A, co uh, um, a, a covered sound would be something like this, where the sound gets caught, like kind of like in the middle of the mouth. A lot of people will talk like this. Yes where all they have to do is raise that soft palate and open their mouths to speak and the sound will come out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you'd reminded me of the other thing that <clears throat> if I could share something that you shared with me, and I, I think, I don't know if you shared this with the whole group or when we did a one-on-one -on -one session at HPS, the, then it always struck with me. And I, I think I told you this, but I taught this to my daughter and she loves it. It's the peculiar, brilliant Italian <laughs> William yep. and Peculiarly. the articulation of that. Yeah. And I, I've taught that to my daughter. She thinks it's hilarious. And then for the audience, if you want to try this, you say that a few times and then you take your thing, your two fingers and you make like a, uh, like your two fingers and you stick it in your mouth and you do it. Uh, peculiar, brilliant Italian William. And then when you come back out, your articulation is automatically better. It's, it is. it's magical. It is magical. It is. And if you do it a few times, 
peculiarly brilliant Italian William. Peculiarly brilliant Italian William. So you do that four or five times and you take your fingers out and everything is easier. It's so crazy. Yeah, I know. I love it. So there you go. There's two pro tips from Darcy for free. We're not going to charge you for this episode. But this is just a, I just want to highlight because this is just a taste, a small taste of all the things that you train and coach around. So I just wanted to do that and uh, a real time voice lesson on, on, on the air. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's right. Pretty cool. This Thank you great. very much, I Darcy. Fun. Yeah. I, I always have fun with that. All right. So now that my, now that I'm more warmed up and I feel like I can project more, not project more, but I feel, I feel looser and it's definitely true. I do. Now you get to ask me something. Yeah, more comfortable. Now you get to ask me something that I can answer. And it's perfect because now I get a chance to speak a little bit more and hopefully my voice sounds better. So Darcy, what yeah. question do you have for me? Well, here's what I'm wondering a lot lately about a lot of people. And I'm, I'm, I always want to know how couples are navigating the pandemic, especially mm -hmm. with kids. And yes. I'm watching my own son and daughter-in-law who live next door do that with their two kids. Has this whole deal made your relationship stronger? Has it strained you? What have you, and what have you learned about your wife? Kirsten, is that what you said? Kirsten? Kirsten yes. My wife, Kirsten. By being at home with her 24 seven that you didn't know about her before. Yeah. Oh, this is such a good question. How do I want to answer this? I think it is not necessarily been a positive for us. And I want to give you the context of why I say that. Our life in January of 2020 and February of 2020, so a year ago, was my wife, my wife had and still has a very busy job, busy. I don't mean busy, like busy work, like just a very responsible job where she was on a plane every week. She was in the office every, every day. We had somebody taking care of our daughter or she was in school. And I was also very, um, moving around the city, working with clients, networking, do all the things that I do, improv class, all that good stuff. Pandemic hits and suddenly we're all in the same space every minute of every day. And what I know about my wife and I's relationship is a little, the absence makes the heart, the heart grow fonder is definitely true for us. And I think where it's become strained is it's a little more taken for granted because we're just together all the time. Like we have not been apart. My wife, my daughter and, and myself in a year. And then coupled with that, my wife went on, went on maternity leave in September and we had our son in early October. So now we have another human here in the house with us, which is amazing. But we're kind of used to like, and my wife and I are both really independent people as well. And now we're all like in the house every day together. So I think it's strained a little bit in terms of, hey, what used to be like, hey, we're busy. And then we kind of come home from work and we'd always joke. We'd say, hey, like daddy goes to work, mommy goes to work, and then Hannah goes to work, which was her school. Then she's hanging out with the, with her care. And then we all kind of get together at 630. And now it's like, hi, we're, we're all here in the house together all day, every day. And it's a little more, um, we're a little together all the time. So I think it's been straining in that way, not from anything's wrong, but just that we like, we liked our flow pre-pandemic. Uh -huh. We liked, we liked having a little bit of that space. Like we're both, my wife and I are both people who like to have our own time to express our creativity. And we're, we're both very social people. We're both extroverted. So we both like to see friends and all those things. And now it's like, Hey, we're seeing a lot of each other. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the, the conversation was we're seeing a lot of each other and our daughter who used to have childcare and was in school is now sitting at our kitchen table with a tablet on zoom and then has nothing to do the rest of the day. So then she's watching movies or hopefully doing some activities <laughs> And then with Charlie, our son, my wife isn't working. So, you know, she's on maternity leave. So for her, now there's even more like, great. I love the time with the kids, but I don't really have, I don't, I'm not using that part of my brain as much. Yeah, it's hard. That's hard. It's hard, right? It's just like, it's like a big change for us. So I think it's been strained, but I think the, yeah. 
but the good part I would say is uh, really getting to spend significant quality time with the kiddos has been yeah. pretty awesome. And it it's really been a, it's really been a gift. So strain in the marriage, not in a bad way, just it's different and something that took some getting mm-hmm. used to, but also I think for myself, we've become, uh, I think we both become better parents. And I was, I was mm. laughing to myself when you talked about the thing around um, like the reading part, because one of the things that I've been practicing with my daughters, I try to read to her every night and I'm just going to humble brag for a minute. She loves Star Wars because we watched all the Star Wars movies together and we got her, there's there's these great books. They're like five minute stories and they have them for like Disney characters and they have them for Star Wars. So they're like actual movies, uh, Star Wars stories from the movies and they're like five minutes and they tell like, a, oh, the battle with Darth Vader and Luke or something like that. And I try to read them like I'm a theater actor with her and she loves it. You go. It's so that fun. It's fantastic. It's so fun. And I'm like, it's my own little way to perform and like work on my voice and work on my intonation and all these things that I want to do in the real world, but do it in a very safe place, which is my five-year-old daughter who's wildly entertained by it. And I'll, I'll like, right. I'll try to like create the voices of the characters. And obviously Darth Vader is fun. I'll do a Yoda and do it. And she just loves it. And I'm actually, now that we've been doing some work together, I'm, I'm also practicing on my articulation and yeah. broadcasting yeah. this. And so it's been, it's been, um, it's been, there's been a lot of gifts as well. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's what I got for you. Sometimes you have to look for the, you have to mine for those gifts. You do. You do. (laughs) And that's okay. That's really okay. It's been, I think it's certainly been a huge and difficult learning experience for everybody and everybody has their own version of it. But I, I, my heart is with all four of you. I get it. I really do get it. Yeah. I was going to ask you before we move on, how is, um, how are your kids and the grandkids doing with the pandemic? Well, my youngest son and his fiance are really loving it because they're both total introverts and they both work mm. from home. So they're all fine. Yep. I don't worry about them. Yeah. But my older son um, and his wife, well, he, my older son loves a party and he loves to entertain and Me he too. cooks all the time and he's missing it so much. We are lucky that we currently live next door to one another in a, in, in city row homes. So when Mm -hmm. they moved in, we took the fence down. And so now we have this huge city backyard. So we Uh. ordered, um, you know, heaters, you know, like the restaurant heaters, those propane heaters, and we bought a fire pit so that we could celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas and one of my son's birthdays out out there. I mean, we can't do it all the time because it's pretty yeah. crappy a lot of the time, but we managed a few get togethers and that's been lovely, but, um, it, I think it's been tough for him. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he misses people. He misses, he, he owns two businesses and he misses his, you know, he's on zoom all the time. He misses being with his people. I think. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. yeah I, I think the, the living situation you have is making a, if anybody else is listening, who's a grandparent is probably making them very jealous, including my parents would, I don't know that they'd want to live that close to us, but I think they would really enjoy being able to be like, you know what? I want to see Hannah and Charlie. Let's go do that. (laughs) Just walk, walk, walk through the backyard to do that. That's, that's really cool. That's a, what a gift. We haven't done that for a year because their kids are in school and we have stayed away from them because the kids you know, we're high risk and yeah. the kids are exposed. In, in, and so we kind of see each other sort of outside or maybe at a distance. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it's, it's hard. Or Alex, my son will come over and borrow an onion and uh, yeah. that's it. Pretty much it. Well, we're, it seems like we're kind of on the home stretch. So let's, uh, fingers crossed. Yes. Yeah. All right. Darcy, what are you passionate about? Um, besides IPA, it always comes back to the IPA. (laughs) No, I'm not going to talk about the IPA and I'm not going to talk about kids. I'm I'm very proud of them. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think, yeah, I like me. I really love making happy abodes. 
I like making happy homes. I'm very mm-hmm. passionate about that. I think that's probably where my oldest son gets that. And I and I am. I'm I, I am really passionate about voice and language and making truth and beauty through voice and language. I, those are the things that really kind of light me up. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Another way I like to phrase this question sometimes like, what's the thing you could do all day, every day, and then you never get tired of it? Oh, okay. Now there you're talking my language. Um, um, I could be decorating and moving furniture until my head fell off. Moving furniture? Like physically moving it or saying somebody else go move that furniture? Well, it depends on how heavy it is. I have been known to move <laughs> bureaus by putting rugs under the legs and pushing them across the floor. Yeah. Because I've wanted it that badly. Yeah. yeah. So you're I somebody who really it. likes diversity and change in your life. Yes. Yeah, I, me well, too. Well, I like it if I can control it. You know, there's some change I can't control. And yeah. that's yes. that makes me hysterical. Yeah. But I think I feel like there are certain people that are, their personality type is more, I've got this room and I bought the furniture and it's going to be laid out this way. This is never changing. Like this yeah. is perfect as it is, which is great. There's nothing wrong with any of that, but there's nope. certain people like that's like, nope, we nailed it. Don't ask me to change this because it's never happening. Yes. Yes. I have a friend that way. And I actually helped do her house. I helped decorate her house. And that was, I don't know, 10 years ago. And I keep walking in there and saying, Linda, we need to move the book on your bookshelf and let's move it. And she says, no, it's staying just yeah. this way. She starts shaking. No, yes, she does. driving up her anxiety. That's awesome. So Darcy, what's the thing that you're most proud of? It's kind of related to that. We live in a two unit house. We, the, the row house that we own is two units. There's, there's an apartment on the second and third floor. And I, when the first tenant moved out, um, after we bought it, I said to my husband, let's turn this into an Airbnb. And we did. And it was beautiful. And it was popular. And we kept getting five stars. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon we became super hosts. Mm -hmm. And then we became Airbnb plus People mm. were clamoring. I, I, it was hard to find. I, I used to have to block off days, months in advance so that my family could come and stay. Mm-hmm. We, and I loved doing it. I didn't need to talk to people. I just needed to make them a beautiful place. And Jason, it was gorgeous. And then the pandemic hit. Mm-hmm. And I remember the last guest as he was tearing out to get back to Connecticut because he was so nervous about being in Philadelphia. And we turned the lights out and we scrubbed it and we rented it out to long-term tenants in July. Mm. And they're lovely, but boy, do I miss that place. And that I'm proud of my kids, but I, you know, I didn't do that. They did that. Yeah. But I am proudest of that place that I made so special and I miss it. Yeah. You know, I feel like it's, I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't share a very, very, very similar experience. Really? You probably didn't know this. So where we are currently living is in our house in upstate New York in the Catskills. It's about 120 miles from the city. Right. And we got this place in 2014 as our forever place to go. It's a small place. And we are also Airbnb hosts. And we also created this house with the intention that it's our house first, but it is also a great place for people to come and stay. We are also super hosts. We have almost 100 five-star reviews. We never did Airbnb plus because I don't know if we didn't quite get there or if the pandemic hit, but you know, like, and and it's so cool that you shared this Darcy, because I never thought about this, but my wife and I are really proud of our Airbnb rating and that the fact that there's a hundred, but also that there was a hundred and our, it's a house, right? So we get, we got a lot of families. I don't know if you did or not, but we got a lot of families and they would write us things like, Oh my God, our kids had the best time in the yard or, Uh. or, Oh my gosh. Like, this was a, you know, this is uh memories for a lifetime. Like we'd have people that would come 
and stay here. And they'd say, Hey, we're, we're actually coming into town. Cause this, we're in a small town you know, we're up in here in the country in the mountains. And they'd say things like, you know, like my daughter's getting married at the event center, <clears throat> two towns away and your house looks perfect. And they would write, they go, this was the perfect place for us. And we hosted the, we hosted the, um, the morning after like, brunch at the house and it was so good and thank you so much for making it so welcoming and it's it's just such a cool thing and it's like yeah you're making the money and you're you're turning an asset yeah. into a re a, you know a resource that you have into some income which is really cool but also like people are just making memories which is so cool so i'm i'm glad yes. you've had that similar experience i i people go whoa how's airbnb is it a lot of problem i'm like we had almost no problems yeah and like really amazing people that respected yeah. our property and it's it's been great i miss it Cause you know, that's not, yeah. it's not a, uh, it, you know, we're living here. <laughs> we're living here now. So we can't right. be it. We actually had somebody yesterday and I am going to guess that you have the same experience. They're like, Hey, we stayed there two years ago and we see that yep. it's blocked off. Any chance it's going to be open. I got to write it back and say, uh, no, we're going to be yeah. here. So. Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I do have that from time to time where my repeat customers will reach out to me and say, we can't find you. Are you still doing this? Or we would love to come and stay. And I, it was just, it was wonderful for, for people who wanted to explore the city. Yeah. And I didn't have families. I had mostly couples or maybe friends or single people because they were coming into sightsee or they were coming into work. I had one woman who was doing her internship as a nurse and she stayed for a month and, Oh, I want, just wanted to put her in my pocket and take her home. She was the best human. I loved it. <laughs> That's awesome. I met so many wonderful people and, and just making this place so beautiful. Oh, and then I had a lighting designer come. He was an architect and a lighting designer. And in his comments, he wrote, I have never stayed in an Airbnb where the lighting has been so perfect. Oh, you're like, you're like, keep talking to me. Keep, keep sweet talking. talking to me, buddy. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. All right. Darcy. Yeah. What's something that you're afraid might actually be true about you? This is a really, um, this is a question that kind of goes to my heart. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> and it's that I have not lived up to my full potential. Mm. Yeah. You being a coach, I'm sure you've heard that before. Uh, I've, I've heard it before from others and I also hear it for myself quite a bit. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I think, I think that's, I think that's a, I think that's kind of a, almost a human condition. You think so? I, I don't mean, know. I just kind of chalked it up to listening to what my parents were saying all the time, which was stuff like, <laughs> you can't do that. What yeah. are you doing that for? You can't do that. <laughs> yeah. I can hear the tone of voice in my head. So I just kind of bought it, you know? Yeah. That's, and that's what, and that's what therapy is for. Models. Yes. And yeah. that is what therapy is for. But, but, you know, I didn't really have any role models. You know, I had older sisters. My sisters were much older than I, and my brother was older, but I never really had a role, like a woman role model to say, mm -hmm. oh, that's how you do it until I was much, much older. And then I got it. I sort of got it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm probably <clears throat> getting it. Yeah. So my follow-up to this is what do you do to what do you do to compensate for that fear um i meditate a lot mm. i i do practice mindfulness meditation so that i'm aware of what thoughts i am thinking that are, that are sabotaging me and I'm not mm -hmm. very good at it, but I'm better at it than I was. Mm -hmm. And I use affirmations. You know, I, I just, I, I tell myself things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. You know, sort of basically along the lines of you are enough. Yeah. Yep. That, yep. <clears throat> well, thanks for sharing that and being vulnerable. I think that's, Again, that's, that's something that resonates for me. 
And uh, I would assert it resonates with a lot of people listening. Like, I'm not enough. So how do I prove to myself and to the world that I am enough? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I always felt like I was missing out on, like I was missing something. Like I didn't have the (laughs) secret that the other people had. And I just think every, first of all, I think everybody feels that way. Yeah. Um, So you had FOMO before anybody knew what FOMO was. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like yes. I was, that was not a term that I knew when I was growing. Like I'd never heard, I think, I don't know when it was invented, but like I th- I've had FOMO year. my whole life last, <laughs> last year. <laughs> I mean, I actually had to look it up. I said, FOMO, what is that? Right. And you're like, oh, that's the thing that I've never been able to put a name to that <laughs> I've had my whole life. Yeah, I get it. Whole life. <laughs> yeah, it's that's funny. It is. FOMO is a disease. Um, all right. Thank you, Darcy. So we're going to, Start to wrap her up here. I want to ask you a couple more questions if you have a few more minutes for me and for the audience. I have all the time in the world for you, Jay. All right. We're going three more hours. We're going to do a we're going to do an hour-long vocal exercise uh coaching session live on the podcast. And the audience, like, great, good for you to click. I'm done listening to this. (laughs) I'm out. Um, all right. So Darcy, what is your general philosophy on life? And another way I like to phrase this is you wake up in the morning and it's a normal morning for you. How do you see the world? Um, it's my philosophy on life. Um, I guess to, yeah, I think to be kind. Um, and that includes to yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and to be, and, and loving and, and love thy neighbor even that la- neighbor you don't really love <laughs> you get doesn't mean you have to forgive that person or but you, well yes it means you have to forgive them it just means you can't um you can't condone their action you know like when they throw their garbage out on the street or something <laughs> but i i do try and look at the other side of um the picture S- I try to see it from another person's point of view and I'm not always very successful at it, Mm -hmm. but I, I, that's how I like to operate from a loving place. Very cool. That's my basic philosophy. I love it. All right, Darcy. I approach my students. Yeah. Yeah. And that's definitely my experience of you. It's it's like seeing possibility. Right. Yep. Totally. All right. I have no doubt when people hear, my stunningly ravishing, exquisite voice <laughs> that they're going to say, this woman is a sorceress. She's a, yes. she's a, she's a yes. wizardess or whatever you would call her sorceress. <laughs> if she can do it for Jason, she could do it for anybody. How can they find you? How can people connect with you? And I love this. If you say LinkedIn, I'm going to laugh so hard. You're like, <laughs> perfect. Search me on LinkedIn, but don't connect with me. And then you can... <laughs> Okay, here's here's what I want to do to troll you, to troll you, Darcy. I want everybody who listens to this episode to look you up and to search for you and look you up, but not connect with you. And you'll be like, I have like a hundred people. <laughs> oh yeah, do that. I'll write thank you notes to every one of them. Personal, like a paper written thank you note of. I, I think I have your. Can I get your address so I can write you the thank you note? Why are you searching for me and then not connecting with me? What's the point of all this? So it's seriously, or also joking, how can the audience connect with you? Like, what's the best way to have them get in touch with you? And we'll put all this in the show notes as well. So you don't Great. need to write this down, but yeah. Yes, what, you, what do you got you for write, us? Not LinkedIn, not Twitter, not but. Tweet at, my- tweet at Darcy and hit her up on LinkedIn. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but you can find me on DarcyWeb.com. dot com. You can also find me on Facebook backslash the speech diva, where you'll find my videos. <laughs> if you want to watch me be silly and in the uh, best way possible in the best way. I, I, I like well, to call I it silly, silly, but silly. fun. I like to call it yeah. fun. Yeah. 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 Totally fun. And Instagram, you'll find some posts on Instagram too. I just posted a, a, a video on both Facebook and Instagram yesterday. So nice. you'll find me there. Awesome. Huh. All right, Darcy, it's been a blast to have you on. Uh, Did you I notice my so blast? That was excellent. I actually, 
I actually started to say blast. I'm like, my natural way to say blast is my, it was a blast having you. I'm like, no, blessed having you on. So I'm working on it. Love if you would leave us with some words of wisdom, words of wisdom. And the words of wisdom should be short and sweet. In other words, fit on a post-it note. For those of you who are young, a post-it note is this piece of paper that can be stuck to stuff. I'm being a little facetious. Or an Instagram post, the graphical part of it. So Darcy, what do you have for us? I got it stuck to my book right now. Thoughts become things, baby. Thoughts become things, baby. I love that, Darcy. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being on today. I, it was really you, a pleasure Jason. to to get to a chance to connect with you in this way. Um, if you oh, such fun, yeah. And if I just want to give you another shout out for those, if you can't tell, Darcy is the real deal, both in how you teach, how you mm-hmm. coach, what you do in the world, but also you're just a fantastic and fun human being to be with. And like what you brought today is always been my experience of you. And I'm so glad that you said yes to coming on here. Uh, and you. I highly recommend that people connect with you, watch your videos, be silly, and. Uh, and I wish you the best in everything you're up to. Thank you. Thank you. You can't see me, but I'm just sending you lots of thank you vibes with my hands. Very nice. Thank you, Jay. Jazz hands. Are they jazz style hands? Is that? Of course. Yes. That's the best accomplish. Uh, the best acknowledgement I can get on my podcast is a guest sending me jazz hands. Jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Darcy. Have a Thanks, uh, stay warm, stay safe. Uh, enjoy the move. And uh, thank you. <clears throat> I, we need to see pictures of the beach because that is something I really need to see is pictures of a beach because I've not seen a, pic- a beach in a long time. Sending them. Yeah. Sure All right, Darcy, thank you and have a All great right. thank rest you. of the week. Thank you so much. You too. Bye. Here. Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of Talking to Cool People with Jason Frizzell. If you enjoyed today's episode, please tell your friends. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and give us a shout out or take a moment to leave a review on iTunes. If something from today's episode piqued your interest and you'd like to connect, email us at podcast at jasonfrizzell.com. We love hearing from our listeners because you're cool people too.